Hi students and welcome to this week's video lesson. As you can see this week we have a music theory lesson. So your assignment is going to be to complete a worksheet. You can find the worksheets on Google Classroom and there will be a worksheet for every instrument in our class. Be sure to complete the worksheet that matches the instrument you play. Now for your practice this week, you can go back and review some of the old lesson videos from earlier in the year. And you can play along with them. Also, you can take the time to catch up on any video assignments that you may have missed. And you can also practice the strings karate songs. I hope that gives you some practice ideas. Let's begin. As you can see, the topic for our lesson is clefs, ledger lines, and A string notes. We'll start off with some review. You'll remember from last time that the clef assigns letter names to the lines and spaces of the staff. Also, the instrument you play determines the clef you read. For example, if you play the violin, or another high pitch instrument you will read from treble clef. If you play the cello, bass, or another low pitch instrument you read from bass clef. And if you play the viola, you read from alto clef. The viola is the only modern instrument to read from the alto clef. So viola players, you can think of the alto clef as your special clef. Also, let's review two rules of the staff. First rule, the placement of the note on the staff correlates with its pitch. So, for example, in this top picture of the staff, you see the notes are higher up. So you know that these notes are going to have a higher sound, especially compared to the second example, where the notes are lower down on the staff you know that these notes are going to have a lower sound. The next rule is that the staff works like a musical ladder. You should definitely start associating the staff with a musical ladder or a musical staircase. And you can see here in this first example that the notes are stepping up one by one. And you can really see that this almost looks like the notes are stepping up a staircase. Now, as the notes step up, the sound of the notes becomes higher and you move forward in the musical alphabet. And then in the second example down here, you can see that the notes are stepping down in the opposite direction. As you step down the notes, the sound of the notes gets lower and you move backwards in the musical alphabet. Let's connect this with some facts about the musical alphabet. First fact, there are only seven letters in the musical alphabet. Compared to 26 letters in the English alphabet, it's not that many. The seven letters are A, B, C, D, E, F, and G the first seven letters of the English alphabet. Another fact, as the pitch gets higher, the letters of the musical alphabet are spelled forwards in their normal order. So when you're spelling the notes on the staff, if you have one note, which is A, the note that is one step higher will be B, and then one step higher than B is C, and you spell forward from there. Well, obviously, we have more than seven notes on our string instruments. So this brings up the question of what do you do when you want to go higher than G? What comes next? Well, the rule is, as you continue higher, the next pitch after G is A. 
And that means you recycle the seven letters of the musical alphabet over and over again. So once you get to G, if you want to step up to the next note, you call that note A, then B, C, D, E, F, G. And if you want to keep stepping up from there, you recycle again, A, B, and so on and so forth. You keep going up that way until you get to the top note on your instrument. Now, you also need to know that the opposite is true. As the pitch gets lower, the letters of the musical alphabet are spelled in backwards order. So, G, F, E, D, C, B, A is the notes spelled downward. And if you want to keep going, lower than the note A, you also recycle the letters. So as you step down the notes, you spell G, F, E, D, C, B, A, and then you recycle back G, F, E, D, C, B, A, and you keep going like this until you get to the lowest note on your instrument. Next up, ledger lines. The simplest way to remember what a ledger line is, is to think of them as mini lines that are used to extend the staff. Ledger lines are used to write the notes that do not fit within the lines and spaces of the staff. And you can find ledger lines above and below the staff. Let's see what they look like. So here I have a staff uh, with the notes stepping up and you can see that every single line and space in the staff is filled and there are only nine notes. Well, of course you know there are more than nine notes on your instrument. So there has to be a way to read and write the notes that are higher than the notes in the staff and the notes that are lower than the notes in the staff. And this is where ledger lines come in. Take a look at this. Here you can see with the arrows where the ledger lines are. We use these tiny little mini lines to extend the staff up above and down below the notes that fit within the staff. It also is important to understand that there is no limit to the number of ledger lines that can be used to extend the staff. So let's take a look at an example where we have more than one ledger line above the staff. So here you see some notes stepping up in the staff and we've gotten to this top note sitting on top of the staff. Now, if you want to write a note that is one step higher than this, what you do is you add a ledger line and put the note on the ledger line like this. Now, if you wanna step up above this note, you draw the ledger line again, but this time you put the note on top of the ledger line. If you wanna step up from here, then you have to draw two ledger lines and you can keep going and going. There can be several ledger lines above the staff. And the same is true below. Okay, let's apply this to the notes that we read most often in strings class. And these are the notes on the D and the A strings. I think you'll agree, most of our songs so far are on these strings. And we'll start off with a little bit of review from last time. These are the four staff notes that we learned in the last music theory lesson. And I pointed out to you that we have three staffs here. The top staff is the treble clef staff, so violin players focus your attention here. The middle staff is the alto clef staff, so viola players focus your attention here. 
Bass clef is at the bottom, so cello and bass students are focusing down here. And these four notes that I have drawn on the staff are the D string notes, which we learned last time. So now this week, let's extend up. So here we have the D string notes plus one note above G. Think about the rules of the musical alphabet. When you want to spell one note higher than G, what letter do you use? Keep in mind, students, there's no such thing as the letter H in the musical alphabet. If you said A, you're correct. Remember, when you get to the note G and you want to step up, you recycle the letters of the musical alphabet. So this means the next note here is A. And this note is played simply with your open A string on your instrument. So open A string is on space number two for violins. For violas, A string is in the space above the staff. So A sits on top of the staff for the alto clef. And then for bass clef, the A sits on line five. Let's keep extending up. Okay, so you hear, you see here that the next note up for treble clef is line three. For alto clef, you guys have a ledger line. And for bass clef, the next step up is the note sitting on top of the staff. What is one note higher than A in the musical alphabet students? Think of alphabetical order. If you said B, you're correct. Let's extend even higher. As you can see, for treble clef, we're on space three. For alto clef, we still have one ledger line, but now the note is on top of the ledger line. And for bass clef, we're introducing our first ledger line. What note is one note higher than B in the musical alphabet? If you said C sharp, you're correct. And let's extend up one more note. On the treble clef staff, you can see this is line four. Alto clef, now you have two ledger lines. And for bass clef, there's still one ledger line, but the note is on top of the ledger line this time. What is one note higher than C sharp in the musical alphabet? If you said D, you're correct. And so this note is the high D from our D major scale that we practice in, in class. So now you can see this is a very important slide because it shows all eight notes of the D major scale for your instrument. And I will include this slide in your Google Classroom so that you can look at it and study it and also use it to help you complete the worksheet and even use it to help you read some of the songs in your book. Excellent focus this week, students. I hope you're having a nice week, and um, I hope that uh, you enjoyed learning about reading the notes on the staff. Don't forget to keep up your practice, and I look forward to seeing you next time.